Hello, hi. Welcome to this lecture on the law of contract in relation to the topic of consideration. And this is a very specific topic where I want to talk about the case of MWB and road advertising, the extremely controversial case by the Court of Appeal in 2016. And I've come across uh, many students who seem confused with this case. And the very commonly quoted phrase that they say is that MWB is a case that seems to be inconsistent with Fuchs and Beer. Now, yes, in a way that is true, but if you had read the judgment at the Court of Appeal, you find that they had made attempts to reconcile itself with Fuchs and Beer, and there's every possibility that when the Supreme Court rules on this case later this year, that the Supreme Court may confirm that Fuchs and Beer is not overruled, neither is Williams and Ruffey Brothers, and that practical benefit today can be justified as consideration for part payment of debt. In earlier lectures and recordings, I have done some recordings of this case that you can refer to to understand the facts of the case as well as the arguments raised in that case. Today, I want to just do a very short lecture to summarize the key essence of what the Court of Appeal has done in relation to practical benefit and how it's today justified or recognized as consideration, but in relation to the concept of a unilateral contract, which was the argument that was raised by the Court of Appeal. So again now to run through with you briefly the key arguments for MWB would be as follows. In that there would be an existing original agreement and in the case of MWB, it was this lease or tenancy agreement for which the tenant was not able to pay rent. In the case of Williams and Rofe Brothers, it was an existing agreement between a main contractor and subcontractor. In the case of Fuchs and Beer, it was in relation now to payment of a debt. And so what we want to start off with would be that there is an existing or original agreement. And then subsequently you find that there will be some change of circumstance that prevents effective or full performance. So for example, in MWB, it was the tenant not being able to pay rent due to financial difficulties. Similarly, in the case of Williams, it was also where the subcontractor could not continue doing the work because of financial difficulties. Change of circumstance. And this is a very real thing that we see in contracts of where frequently the commercial realities are such that there could be changes, there could be circumstances beyond our control that makes it difficult for full performance of the contract. Now granted, this itself could be a potential or possible ground for one to sue for breach of contract. But the value of recognizing practical benefit is that we prevent any need for such breach of contract actions we are using this to be an attempt to allow for a contract or for a new contract to be made for the purpose of ensuring that we reduce litigation or hostilities between the parties so for example what happens next is that very often because of that change of circumstance where the parties now arrive at a renewed agreement or a modified agreement now again, there is no need for the parties to arrive at this. They could sue each other for the breach of contract. So for example, in the case of Williams, the main contractor could have sued for the non-performance by the subcontractor. Likewise, in the case of MWB, the landlord could sue the tenant for breach of contract for non-payment of the rental or the lease amount. But yet, the parties now have decided now to enter into renegotiation and to make a new agreement. Now obviously you can see that this is something which is good because it allows for the contract that was made to still maintain its performance. And subsequently of course is the need or requirement for actual performance of that which they've agreed. Now the whole idea of practical benefit now comes in here in that the enforceability of this renewed agreement which has to be supported by consideration is actually now supported by practical benefit. As in, there is now an actual performance of the renewed agreement. 
and this actual performance of the renewed agreement is itself the practical benefit that will be conferred to the promisor to make the promisor be bound to his promise. Now, no doubt, you would obviously appreciate that this actual performance very often is no more, no less the performance of an existing contractual duty based on the existing original agreement, which was the black color box you see here now in this slide. So although the actual performance is the existing original agreement, what you would appreciate is that this is because of that change of circumstance which resulted in the parties entering into a renegotiation. As I said, this is something that the promisor did not need to enter into, but yet he has done so. And so the idea is that if, as a promisor, you still wish for the contract to be performed, you are not intending to pursue any legal actions, and if you have made that renewed agreement to insist on actual performance, based on maybe now a part payment, based on maybe a modified installment plan, then therefore, the moment there is the actual performance of what that which was agreed, that actual performance, which is an act, which is the unilateral contract, is supported by a practical benefit, which is now the consideration for that renewed agreement. What is most important in summary to recognize how it works is and how it reconciles itself with folks and beer with Pinot's rule is this. That today we recognize practical benefit as really a modern reformulation or restatement of the well-known exception in Pinot's rule. Where in the case of Pinot's rule, the court had said already years and years ago by the House of Lords that if there is part payment with a bird, a hawk or a robe, then this can amount to a good discharge of the contract. In other words, whilst part payment in itself will not discharge a full debt, but part payment with a gift, part payment with something else, such as, in the words of Pinot's rule, a bird, a hawk, or a robe, then this part payment with something else will discharge the full debt. And so one way to understand and to review practical benefit is today to look at it as a modern restatement of the same exception, which is that part payment in itself is not sufficient, but part payment together with practical benefit. Part payment together with practical benefit, which was that which was agreed to be performed and now is performed, will support the consideration for the renewed agreement to be enforceable against the promisor. And this was actually the ground used in the case of MWB by the Court of Appeal in how they recognize practical benefit as sufficient consideration. In coming to this conclusion, it is important to note that they were not overruling nor criticizing Fuchs and Beer, but rather they were reconciling itself with Fuchs and Beer. Fuchs and Beer, a case on part payment, was a case where there was no further existing original agreement because that agreement to pay debt had ended. And so that was why in Fuchs and Beer, the court could not have used practical benefit because there was no further existing original agreement. Rather, it will be amounting to the making of a new agreement. And so correct, if it's to be a new agreement to accept a lesser amount, then this is something that the court will not recognize as good consideration. But on the other hand, in the case of MWB, in the case of Williams and Rofe Brothers, this would be where it's a modification of an agreement, it's dealing with a renewed agreement, and therefore that's why the court is prepared to, in some sense, dilute or lower the threshold or standard of consideration and to accept practical benefit as sufficient. In my earlier video recording, I commented in how practical benefit can be justified in relation to modified agreements or renewed agreements, whereas in comparison or in contrast, it ought not be recognized for the formation of new contracts. And so that's really in some sense what I'm saying here as well, and it's very brief summary to capture the essence of MWB and for students to be aware of its decision and its implication. 
Of course, all this remains to be seen because it's still pending a final judgment by the Supreme Court, which is out sometime this year. So I hope that you have found this to be of some clarification. And if you have liked this video recording, please feel free to subscribe, to share, and to like. Thank you.